On December 14, 2010, Lyndon Tibbetts, who was working for IDEO at the time, announced a project IFTTT on his website, ifttt.com. The acronym IFTTT stands for If This Then That and is often pronounced IFT. IFT is a fairly simple programming model that allows users to connect web services if A occurs, then do B. For example, I have found it quite useful in automating a number of tasks, like I can have my phone be notified whenever somebody on Twitter uses a particular hashtag, and this allows me to keep track of trends in real time. Lucky for us, Particle has a built-in IFT channel that allows us to connect our hardware to a lot of different web services. And in this episode, we're going to do just that. We'll modify our AC appliance switcher to respond to a number of web events. But first, before we get started, let's make one minor fix to the hardware. Unfortunately, the Photon requires an internet connection to run our code. There is a fix we could do in software, but it's a bit more complicated than what I'd like to cover. Additionally, it still doesn't act as a great failsafe. If the code stops running for whatever reason, we can't get power to our appliance. To get around this, we're going to make a simple circuit using a transistor, a resistor, and a switch. First, we'll put a 1K ohm resistor between pin 6 and the base of an NPN transistor. We'll then connect plus in of the power switch tail to 3.3 volts from the photon and minus in to the transistor's collector. This will allow us to switch the power switch tail from the microcontroller just like we did before, and then we'll add a manual switch between minus in and ground. This acts as a manual override, allowing us to give power to our appliance in the event our photon fails. Let's build the circuit on the breadboard. Instead of connecting 3.3 volts and ground directly to the components, we'll use the power rails on the breadboard. For the 2N3904, if you face the flat edge of the transistor toward you, the pins will be emitter, base, collector. Place the transistor just behind the photon and connect the 1K resistor to D6 and the base of the transistor. Use a wire to connect the emitter to the ground rail. Place the switch such that one of the edge pins is connected to the transistor's collector. Use another wire to connect the middle pin of the switch to ground. Then connect the 3.3 volt rail to plus in of the power switch tail. And finally, connect the transistor's collector to minus in. After that, plug in the photon. If your photon is running code from the previous episode, you should see the power switch tail turning on and off repeatedly. Try flipping the manual override switch and the power switch tail should stay on. Just remember that if you leave the switch on, the photon will no longer be able to control the relay. Head to build.particle.io and sign in. Let's create a new app and name it something like ift on off. We're going to write a relatively simple program that does nothing but idle and waits for an HTTP POST request. The request will come from ift and contain either the message on or off in the form of a string. We'll toggle the power switch tail accordingly. Like last time, we'll start with int pst equals d6. In setup, we'll set the pst pin as output. Then, we'll register the function pin switch with Particle's cloud service. Don't worry, we'll write pin switch in a minute. The cloud service has a tie-in with ift, so we'll be able to call this function from ift with the name switch. Leave loop blank. We don't want the photon to do anything while waiting for the switch command. Finally, we need to write the pin switch function. Note that it should return an integer. Zero generally means OK, and minus one is usually used to indicate an error. Additionally, we have one parameter of type string. In the function, type slash slash set pin state based on given parameters. If state equals equals on, digital write pst high, else if state equals equals off, digital write pst low, else return minus one. In this, we turn D6 on if the parameter is the string on, and we turn it off if the string is off. If we receive a bogus command, return minus one to show that we had an error. Return zero and close out the function. That's it for the firmware. Save and upload it to the photon. Let's say that we want to turn on a lamp at sunset. We can use ift to automate that task. Head to ift.com and sign up for an account. Once you've been signed in, you'll be presented with a screen to create your first recipe. If you don't see that screen, simply go to My Recipes and click Create a Recipe. Click the underline This and search for Weather. Click Weather, click Connect, search for the nearest major city, select it, and click Connect and Done. 
Then click continue to the next step. Click sunset and create trigger. Then click on the underlined that. Search for particle, click it, and select connect. A pop-up window will appear asking you to enter your particle credentials. By doing so, you will have connected your particle account to IFT, a very good thing indeed. Click OK and done. Back in the recipe, click Continue to the next step. Now select Call a function. From the drop-down menu, you should see Switch on and your photon's name. Select it. In the input field, delete everything and write on. Finally, click Create action and Create recipe. You should see that your recipe is on and ready to be triggered. All we need to do now is wait for sunset. There we go. Now, how do we turn it off? Well, we could write another recipe that calls the switch off function every day at 11 p.m., assuming that's about bedtime. But if we wanted to more control, we could use another option that IFT offers. That is the Do button. Search for the Do button in the App Store or Google Play. Install it and open it. Swipe through the intro and sign in using your IFT account. Click the mortar and pestle icon and click the plus button to create a new recipe. In Do, there are no If This parts. That's covered by a giant button on your phone. Click on Channels and search for Particle. Click it and select Create a New Recipe. Click Call a Function and give the recipe a name like Turn Lamp Off. Select Switch On, your photon name, from the drop-down menu and replace the input field with the string Off. Click Add. You'll see a screen with your recipe name and a giant Do button. Try pressing the button. Note that because this request has to go across the internet through several servers, it could take upwards of 30 seconds to turn your lamp off. And that's it. These should give you the building blocks necessary to control a good number of home appliances. And I know that turning a light on and off automatically at night is pretty useful. You could do something more frivolous, say, have it flash whenever somebody tweets at you. Or let's say you needed to access your desktop or a server, but you didn't want to leave it running all the time. In the BIOS of most computers, you can have the computer boot after restoring AC power. We can then connect the computer's power supply through the power switch tail, and using the exact same recipe that we made for the lamp, I could hit a button and turn on my computer from almost anywhere in the world, assuming I have internet access. Knowing that the computer's on, I could then log into my Minecraft server or SSH in to do whatever I needed. I'm curious to see what else you've used IFT for. Leave a comment with your favorite IFT recipe or an idea for a recipe. Also, don't forget to check out the home automation page on hackster.io for more projects.